Have you ever thought about creating an online course? Well done! Maybe you already started and you're not sure if it's going the way you want it to be or you're just starting and you don't know how to set up the business fundamentals or you don't even know how to choose a course topic. In this video, not only I will show you how to choose your course topic, I will also show you how to set up a strong business fundamentals that you will be grateful and it will save you lots of lots of time and money trust me on that one and i strongly believe that you have to watch this video if you are in the online course business so let's get started okay i will show you the practice that you must do to actually understand what you're good at and not only what you're good at that i think this will really help you to extract your knowledge and extract the spiritual way that you actually function this will make sense at the end and it's probably gonna take you 20 minutes or so so let's get dive into it first of all why this is important maybe you're an expert creative coach or one of those that i'm showing you on my screen and you heard that online courses are getting big according to forbes it's gonna be 325 billion by 2025 but these numbers are in the past i couldn't find a recent article i think these numbers are so getting huge i think it's more than one trillion even at the moment because i'm not sure in this research what kind of numbers they included so what that means is this is a huge trend and there's no trend like this and this industry is getting huge as you can imagine right because the things are changing in the world and stuff like that and i'm sure if you're watching this video you also like me and you want to change the world the way you feel like it is right and you want to share the experience knowledge with the people and you want to feel connected right so if you want to change the world in a good way in ethical way first i think you should understand yourself and the world current self I don't know if it makes sense grammatically, but I just wrote it. And I want to also share you guys the misunderstanding about online course business. You don't have to be most knowledgeable person in the world on your topic. You just have to be one chapter ahead of the people you're helping. As Russell Branson said, you don't have to be an expert or have a master degree about the topic that you will share with the world. You just have to be a chapter ahead of the people you're teaching this is it and if you're wondering who are you to tell me this right well i'm not like it i may be one chapter ahead of you and maybe not i don't know but i'm just trying to share my knowledge and experience i started with doctors and i helped doctors to grow their business in the past i was a consultant and i was doing done for you services however i saw the online course is a scalable and huge trending business so i get into that but doctors are kind of like you know don't want to spend their time on online course they rather to have a done for you service so online course wasn't fitting in that area at that point at that time right now i think there's a market in this niche also but this is this is not what i'm gonna talk about after that i was doing an amazon business as you can imagine and i help people to learn from me about amazon and i changed the complete market in turkey and i have hundreds and hundreds of students there already have a successful business and they also share their knowledge with consulting and also online courses in turkish speaking countries this was amazing experience for me this completely changed the market and i cannot even believe 26 25 year old kid can do that and right now i'm 28 and i just want to share that i am experienced enough to talk about this but not only that i think this will give you a lot of value so let's get into it and i strongly believe that i am a spiritual being right so when i'm creating a business it should feed me with a spiritual way and tangible way because we're not only living in a spiritual world so it has to be in some point financially meaning otherwise that doesn't make me feel like I am actually doing something good for also myself. Without helping yourself, you cannot help others. I strongly believe that. If you have your opinion, please share in the comments. But this is my opinion. And if you want to have an actual business, you have to be good at a business finance side, right? So in this example, we're not only going to see what you're good at. We're also going to see if it makes sense in the market so 
In that case, I will have two practices, you and market. Let's find out what you're good at. If you're not good at something, you can actually learn something quickly. You just need to be one chapter ahead, okay? So don't worry, but I'm already sure that you are good at something and you will just have to work on it. Let's find out, okay? What are or could be the three things that make you stand out from your competition? Maybe you're already an expert, right? Like we said it at the beginning. For me, I love helping people, sincerely. I'm really, I care people and people know it. People feel it. People are not obviously stupid and they feel it. And I'm authentic and direct. It's the reason that I'm being successful. Whatever I do, people feel it, people know it. And so far, whatever I created got successful. After I quitting my job, I created four times more income in the first week. I thought at the beginning everybody could do this, but they couldn't. So I must be good at something that generally people are not. So I'm more than average in some point, right? So I had to go over it. I didn't know at that time. So right now you will consciously know what you're good at so that you can create business over the things that you're actually good. So you have to make the good things better. You should not start from the bad. You also have probably weak points. So you don't have to go from the weak points because the business have a competition part, right? So you have to stand out from the crowd. Don't forget that and do this practice, please, please, please. What are or could be the specific skills that you have developed that make you successful at what you do? I teach what works. I also lead companies based on my values. I love creating and teaching through videos. I think I'm good at videos. How I find out that is in my university, I was just doing a one presentation. It was my first presentation. My teacher said, you're really good at presenting. And I think you should go over it. And she told me that I never forget. You have to go with something that you will do presentation in a professional way. Armand, don't forget that. And I know that I'm good at videos. And I teach what works is I teach whatever I did. I never teach people something that I didn't. But, however, I'm going to tell you, if you want to be in the knowledge business or online course business, you don't have to teach whatever you're good at. You can find someone who is good at So you can be a knowledge broker. It's a new term, but it's getting a new trend. It's being very popular these days. You can just understand this fundamentals and you can create, you can still create a business. And I did that too. I will show you in the next videos maybe. Okay, what are the two things in your business that make you the happiest and are the things you will never delegate and outsource. This is very important. I think whatever you do, marketing cannot be delegated or outsourced. In my point, I cannot delegate marketing. So this video is cannot be done from someone else. Not only because people generally don't speak as good as English that I do. I'm not saying I speak perfect English. I live in Turkey, right? So I speak, I practice Turkish, Turkish, Turkish all the time. And people around me, they speak Turkish. My, I mean, even though they know English, they don't practice. So I can speak at least more than average. And this is not only that, I cannot delegate the marketing part of my business. I know that. And also I cannot delegate the teaching part because I love teaching. So you got to find out that. What are the two, three stories that were turning points in your life? Epiphany moments, right? So like, Wow, it was, it changed my life completely. One of them is I thought the hard work is the only thing that matters when it comes to business. But I realized that the hard work is actually not the only thing. And I mean, not, I'm not saying the hard work doesn't work. Hard work is necessary, but it's not the only thing. You must know what you're good at and you actually need to work smart. Whoever says that you have to hard work, work, work. Well, there are lots and lots of people who work hard. Don't live their dream life. I mean, in my opinion, you must be happy, right? Whatever I do is just to make myself happy so I can serve people the best version of myself. If I cannot make myself happy, I cannot make anybody happy. So it was one of the realization that I had in my past. You can come up with these things and that will make sense at the end. Of. So market part, this is very, very important also because you know yourself, but you gotta know the market also at the current self. Okay, at this point, you know yourself, you have to do that practice and you know the market because whatever we do, it will come to the market, right? 
So what kind of person do you enjoy time spending with? This is a very important question. And I will give you an example. Or you should ask this question. Who do you like to serve? Well, at the beginning, I thought that I want to work with smart people. And this is why I choose doctors. After that realization, how can I serve doctors? What doctors need? Doctors have a problem with time. And also doctors have a problem running their business. However, not all doctors have the business. What kind of doctors have business? So I come up with the idea to help with plastic surgeons because I knew that they were making money so they can give me a good check. If I solve their problem, what could be their problem? They, their problem is generally marketing because they are so focused on their patients, they cannot solve the problems in marketing. So what I did is I come up with a package with Facebook ads I help them grow their business with my kind of like software, Facebook software that I created in just a couple weeks. I'm not saying you will also work with doctors, obviously, but you have to realize this. After that, I realized even though I was making good amount of money, it was in the health niche and plastic surgeons are not always, not all of them working perfectly ethical in my point of view. So I realized that I cannot know what they're doing. So I don't want to market people who are not actually serving people in my values. So I realized that I had to do something not involving health. This was my value. So I started my own Amazon business because I knew that I will just sell product, not service. After selling my product, I got kind of successful. And people were around me asking me, how did I do? Because I was just, you know, checking my Amazon store and I was showing my friends at least, right? They wanted to learn from me, but I knew that I had to charge them. Otherwise, they will not follow what I say. So I charged them and I, this is how I started my Amazon online course. And I, it really got huge in Turkey. I made millions. But after some point, I realized that I got really big and I'm, everybody know me like Amazon guy, Amazon guy. I was not the Amazon guy. I just did what it works in the market at that point, right? But people didn't realize that. And I realized everybody wants to do like e-commerce because everybody thinks that they can do e-commerce. I was serving everybody, but I don't like to be with everybody. So I had to serve them in a different way and it didn't really fulfill me and I felt really not fulfilled and I actually hated my job at some point because everybody thought that they can do that business model so everybody was coming at me they were thinking short term they were not actually trying to help people with their products they were only caring about money I did not want to serve those people this is why I had like a big realization that doesn't make me happy. I just want to be happy. Don't you want to be happy, right? So this is why I changed my niche again. And I just realized that I had to help people who actually think like the way I do. This is why I'm helping right now online course creators, because they are very motivated people. They're positive. They want to create something valuable for others. They want to change the world. And this is actually my values. And I, I really love sharing my knowledge and experience with those people. However, you got to find out this kind of things and I don't know what kind of chapter you're in in your life. So you have to consider this kind of things in this part. Okay. What problem are you solving? At the end of the day, you're creating a business and business solves problems, complexity. You have to come up with something that solves the urgent point problem or complexity, right? My solution was helping plastic surgeons to create their personal brand and help those that they want to help with online marketing. So this is what I did at the beginning. However, at the same time, I realized that, that I cannot make an online course and I cannot help lots and lots of people at the same time because online courses is a really huge time leverage. You can scale your business in a big number. So that was motivating me at that time. This is very crucial. Let's go to the next one. Are those people willing to pay you money for solving that problem? This is very, very important at the same time because a lot of people don't go to market and ask questions like, what kind of problem do you have? This is this. Okay, but are you going to give money if I solve that problem? Are you willing to give money if someone solves that problem? You have to actually ask that if they don't give money, that means that that problem could be a 
minor problem. So you have to come up with major problems. In other words, if a lot of people are solving that problem and you're not unique, you also have to consider that. I will give you a good example. And this is actually kind of like odd example, but I know that this will help you a ton. I was in the online course and we were practicing our sales calls, right? I need to practice because English is not my main language. So I was talking to one lady. She's an amazing person. I really love the values that she has. And she told me that she was going to help homeless to overcome their addictions with her dance routine in six weeks. I thought at the beginning she was kidding with me because it was kind of like ridiculous in my point at that time. I was like, okay, that was a good joke I was going to say. And after that, I realized that she was serious. I realized how naive she is. I think not aware of the business part of the equation, right? So I wanted to help her. So I asked a couple questions. I asked her permission. Hey, would you actually give me maybe some feedback? Because you may need it. Have you ever talked to homeless people or do you think it's a good business idea? I'm not saying homeless people doesn't need help. Of course they need help. But in order to help people, you need to help yourself first. And after some time, your subconscious mind affects from those who you surround with. And are you willing to be with homeless people all the time? And are you going to grow yourself and grow your business at the same time with helping those people? You should ask these kind of questions. However, I'm not saying you shouldn't help homeless. Actually, you should. Really, it's an amazing idea. And when I hear this, I wanted to laugh at the same time. I wanted to cry because she was such an amazing person. And I wanted to help her because I wanted to share my knowledge, my experience with her because amazing person, right? This is why I want to help her or I want to help that kind of person. After that, we talked like 20 minutes and she realized that, yeah, you actually are right. This is not my patient. I just want to help those people because I think that those people need a second chance. But I know that I can help them with another way if I am becoming stronger. So she actually changed her business idea to those who actually needed her help more. So I'm not saying you shouldn't help homeless or anything like that. But as a business, are they willing to pay you? Are they need that solution immediately? Like your solution should be kind of like deep. I'm not also saying you have to solve money problem. It is not even true. There are lots and lots of examples right now that people help others with the way that they want and they can charge them premium. So I would suggest you should have a role model at the beginning. If you're a starter, you have to have a role model because we humans want to see that our dream is real. Our ending point is actually achievable. And this is not going to be ending point, but you know what I mean. So I hope this helps you guys. You got to think, of course, spiritual and also tangible. And I think it should be in balance. Otherwise, I believe you cannot be successful in business. Business, not just spiritual. However, I love those people who want to share their knowledge and experience with people who they think that they need a second chance or something like that. I encourage you to focus on your passion expertise. However, you have to consider the business side also. And they should be in balance. I hope you liked the video. Please give me your thoughts in the comment section and please give me a like so that I can help more people just like you. And thank you for watching. I can see you again. Please also subscribe the channel because I will be creating more content like this.